Okay, this is the first episode of C Sharp. In this episode, I'm not going to be using IDE because I want to give you a better understanding of what an IDE does and why they're useful. So, to really understand that, you should try programming without one. Um, and IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, and they're used for writing code, compiling code, debugging code, and organizing code. Um, so, I guess let's get started. First, do start and then type notepad. That's not a useful notepad. Uh, okay, so in here we want to write using system a semicolon capital S lowercase u. Uh, Programming languages are case sensitive. Well, at least the majority of them are anyway. Um, so it's important that you have a capital S and a lowercase u. Uh, this basically means we're using uh, a shortcut to the system namespace. I'll get more into what namespaces mean in later episodes. Um, now we need to create a class to put our code in. So class ep1 open curly bracket close curly bracket. Uh, you can put your curly brackets like this. This is called Egyptian brackets. Um, basically because if some Egyptian stood here and they're doing that dance one arm would be here, the other arm would be here, that's where it gets the naming from. Uh, the other way to do it is like this. There's the two main conventions. But it either works. Um, once you're inside a brace, it's good to tabulate your code. So if you press tab, then it will indent it inwards. After that, we need to do a function. Uh, so you need to type public static void main with a capital M, open bracket, close bracket, open brace go down a couple of lines and then close your brace. Uh, this is the function where your where the uh, code where the program will execute will happen in this function. It needs a capital M. Um, so in here you want to write console dot write line. Uh, console is a class and write line is a function. I'll get more into what they mean later on. And then a semicolon at the end. With inside the right line function, we want to pass a parameter, a string parameter of um, your message. You can type whatever you want into there, as long as it has the speech marks either end. And for now, we'll just leave it like that. You then want to go file, save as, uh, save as type should be all files. And then I'm going to call it app1.cs on desktop. Next, you need to compile your code. So, in an IDE, you just press the play button and it will do it for you. But now, because we're not using IDE, we've got to do it the tedious way. Um, so, press start, cmd, stands for command prompt. We then need to change directories to the directory of the desktop, cd desktop, because this is where the file is contained. And then we need to compile it. Now, if it's already set, set up on your computer, you might be able to type CSC. If it says Microsoft Compiler, then it's already set up. I've not purposely made mine set up, so I can show you how to set it up. Um, so, to set this up, if it doesn't say this, then uh, I'll show you what to do. If it is already set up, then skip to the video where it's set up, or I'll put like a button saying what time to skip to. Um, so to set this up, you need to go to File Browser, right-click Computer, Properties, Advanced System Settings, Environment Variables, under System Variables, go to Path, Edit, um, and then in your File Browser, type percentage uh, system root percentage, and then look for Microsoft.net framework version 4.0.3 um, and then so you want to open that folder as well you want to copy everywhere up to this backslash here and then close it in here at the end of what's already there type a semicolon percentage system root percentage paste so you should have all this including this backslash here after the percentage and then press OK 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 
um, then do CMD and type CSC. Now mine has worked. If this doesn't come up and it still says the same message, then you need to restart your computer. Um, if you're just watching the video now, set it up but don't restart it because uh, just keep watching until episode two. If you're having other problems with getting this work to work, then you just go on to episode two and I'll show you the Visual Studio way of doing things because that's the main way you'd be programming anyway. Um, but now this is set up, I'll go CD Desktop. Again, if it doesn't work, keep watching till the next video and you'll still be able to carry on programming. Um, uh, CSC. Um, then ep1.cs. This is going to compile the uh, file ep1. So this is a command line argument passed into the CSC uh, C sharp compiler program. And now that we've done that, you can see episode one has appeared. So if we do uh, ep1.exe, then we can run the program. It says to say your message, and then it will exit the program. Notice how it's exited back to the command prompt. So if I was to double click to this program, then it would open and close really quickly. I don't know if you can see this. I hope that you can. Uh, the way to fix that is to go back into your program and oh I've clicked edit with Notepad plus plus. You want I'm just edit with Notepad, you don't need to do that. Um you can if you want, but say we downloading more software, I just use Notepad. Um so you want to write console dot read line and this basically gets an input from the user but for now we're just using it to keep the program open I'll get more into console dot read line next episode so you file save uh, and then close episode one's still here uh, but I'll do cmd uh, csc now I'll also show you a way to change the output file so if you do forward slash out colon I'm going to call it ep1 underscore 2 dot exe. So this is a way to name the file different to the source file. You need to put the out thing before the actual source file. Then type the source file name ep1.cs and this should create the program. It should appear here. Oh sorry, you changed directory desktop. Uh, so do that command again. So press up twice and CMD to do that command again. And it should compile and ep1 underscore 2 is here. So now from here do ep1 underscore 2 dot exe. So now notice it shows the message but it hasn't exited the program until you can type here or you can just press enter on its own and then it will exit the program. Um, however the difference is if I double click from the desktop then it will stay open until you type something or just press enter when it's blank either way it would still close it